Hey guys, Drew B. Harlow here with Nine Leadership. Today we're coming to you with a video about networking and how to effectively network on Zoom. Stay tuned, we'll talk about five tips you can use today. So with the pandemics ongoing right now and everything going a little bit crazy, a little less crazy than before or a little bit more depending on how you look at it, it's becoming more and more important to be able to network effectively on Zoom. But what are the differences between that and real life? Well, maybe we should re maybe look at, look at actual similarities because there's a lot of differences and it's very, very different. But here are five tips you can implement today to actually become more effective in networking on Zoom and building stronger connections. First of all, eye contact. You notice right now I'm looking at the camera. It's not natural because it's not a person in front of me. When you're on a screen networking with someone and looking at, at the, their picture, because that's what's natural, you can look at their picture, you tend to look below the camera, down here. So you're looking at their face because their face is, is right here. Now, that's fine if they're talking to you because they're probably going to be looking at the camera, ideally. But when you're talking to them, look back up at the camera and then look down and look up at the camera while you're talking when you look down. Here's why. They're probably looking at your face as well. So the understandable thing is make sure that you're looking them in the eye because eye contact is extremely important. It helps you build rapport that much faster. So when you're networking with someone on Zoom or Skype or any of, those, any of those platforms, look into the camera while you're talking. And then while they're talking, look into their face so they feel more comfortable and listen to what they're saying. I know it's going to feel weird because it does feel weird. Looking into the camera does not seem natural at all. But not much about networking online is really natural, to be honest. So we're really fooling. Tip number two, to please do not multitask. All right, it's very obvious when you're multitasking on a Zoom call. Your eye contact goes all over the place. You're looking at stuff like this, and like you're going off here, you're surfing over here. You just kind of like your phone's down here. It's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna put my phone next to the camera so you can't see what I'm doing here. Oh yeah, that's good. Oh wait, I'm looking at this. I'm looking at that. Oh, there's so many things going off. It's easy to be distracted. I get it. You're not physically there. It's it's, it's easy to be, to not be engaged in what's happening. But you got to at least fake it till you make it. Make sure that people feel like you're connecting with them because you're, you, you want to connect with them. You want to make sure you're building strong connections. Otherwise, what's the point of networking? Just don't do it if you're going to be distracted because you're going to make bad connections and those are not going to help you at all. Tip number three, if you're going to take notes, whether you're typing or whether you're writing, communicate to the other person what you're doing. Let them know that you're not distracted doing something different. You're actually just taking notes or doing whatever you're doing to make sure you're taking care of that interaction. The worst thing that happens is if you're talking to someone and then they're doing something else, you feel like a complete ass. And that person looks like an ass to you. You're not going to want to talk to them. You're not going to want to engage with them. What's going to happen? They're going to shut down. And then there goes that whole hour or 30 minutes or whatever you set aside to connect with that person. It's not going to matter. Now, some people will assume the best intentions and that's fine. But just to make sure everything's clear, just communicate. Just say something simple like, Hey, by the way, if I'm type, if you hear me typing, I'm taking notes. I'm just taking notes on a conversation so I don't forget anything. I want to make sure I track my questions and understand what we're talking about here. Or if you're writing, writing things down, same thing. It just helps the conversation and helps the interaction that much more. Number four is one that I don't think I need to say, but I've seen enough Zoom meetings to say this. Silence your phone, please, for God's sake. And that applies to all electronic things going on in the background. Phones, TVs, music. Please, for God's sake, silence these things. Turn off the TV. You can see the flashing in the face, by the way, unless you have lights on you. And on top of that, it's distracting. You can tell what's going on. Again, going back to the eye contact one, people can, or multitasking, both of them, they actually applies. People can tell when you're not engaged. And if the TV's on in the background, and if you happen to hit unmute, and they can hear the background noise, it's very obvious you're not paying attention. Please make sure you silence all electronics around you. It'll do you a favor and do the other person a courtesy. Last but certainly not least, please keep your video on. If you're in a group meeting and pe everyone, people are talking and things are engaging and everyone's talking about stuff, and that's fine. You know, you got to step away from the, from the computer to go to the bathroom or whatever you need to do, turn your video off. That's totally fine. You can take the dog for a walk, fine. But if you're in front of the computer, please keep your video on. I can't tell you the number of times that I'm on these meetings where you see people turning their video off while other people are talking. And then they only turn the video on when they're talking and then they turn it back off. What am I going to assume? What are you going to assume? That person's probably multitasking. Now they're being somewhat courteous by not showing everyone that they're multitasking, but we kind of know they're tuning out. This is not, always not always the case, but 
that's what we're going to assume. So as often as you can, keep your video on. Treat networking situations online as you would any real life networking situation. Understanding it's not the same, but try to make it as similar as possible so that at least people feel that much more rapport with you. You're allowing them to see your face, see your interactions, see your feedback from when they're talking. That's a huge one. When you're talking to someone or talking in a group and you're not getting any visual feedback, it's tough to know where you stand with people. Now, if I can tell you honestly, I've done a bunch of speaking engagements, I've talked, spoken to different online Zoom groups and that kind of thing, and the best thing is when you're on these groups and you have the, the multi-window thing open, and you can see 10, 15 people in front of you looking, at, looking back at you, and you got like five or 10 that are, just, that are off video, but those 15 are the ones I'm, gonna, ones I'm gonna focus on, and I see their reactions to what I'm saying, and I get that energy back when I see them laughing when I'm making a joke, or when I see them really engaging what I'm saying, or nodding their heads. That kind of visual feedback is extremely, extremely important as a speaker, and I really appreciate it. So understand that people who are speaking to you on these Zoom calls, they appreciate that same kind of courtesy and that same kind of feedback because it gives them the energy to keep pushing forward. If they don't get that kind of feedback, they're not going to know what they, where they stand, and they're probably not going to know that you're even paying attention. So they're probably going to feel like, oh, well, what's the point? You never want people to feel that way because that's how you break rapport and not make them feel like you give a shit. So focus and try to make sure that your video is on when you can. As I said before, there's some situations where you just can't have your video on. Totally understandable. But if possible, again, going back to the communication one, communicate why your video is not on or why you can't turn it on. That at least lets the person understand that, hey, okay, this person is not just tuning me out. They're not just multitasking. They're just not able to turn, turn video on for X reason. Otherwise, the assumption is going to be there that just don't give a damn. Hope you guys enjoy these tips today, guys. We're trying to make sure everyone understands how to network on Zoom, how to be effective remotely, because we don't know how long we're going to be like this. But we'll make the best of it, that's for damn sure. We'll be here to help support you as much as we can. So any questions or comments, please leave them down below. If you like the video, hit the like button, hit subscribe, and hit that bell if you want to get notified of future videos. We're going to do more remote work videos as we go through this and as things keep moving along. So stay tuned and talk to you guys soon. Take care and stay safe.